that another round of applause. Five of us, three of us crews in Alaska, <laughs> and uh, and just sitting there and watching everyone uh, come out, I'm just going to help it. Sorry, a bit emotional. That's a know. problem. <laughs> a very good, awesome afternoon, Janet's family. <laughs> you now I want you to turn to your neighbor right now, okay, on the left and the right, and tell them you're going to have it. Awesome time. Come on, let's do that. He's going to have an awesome, awesome time. time. Awesome time. Awesome time. Now, before we begin, I just have some heartfelt thanks that I would like to give. Because these people have impacted us on this uh, journey. You know, one person that I got to know and became very close friends with um, on the Alaska cruise was Kama Mutani. Please give him a round of applause to our Asia Pacific and Middle East President. And of course, our ever so awesome and lovely General Manager of Singapore, Geraldine Toe! <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> Any secret students here today? Any secret students? <laughs> Alright. He said that a lot of the A grade students end up working for the C grade students. <laughs> and a lot of the B grade students, now I fell into that category. I was neither here nor that. My grades were not all that good, neither were they as bad. But I, I fell right in the middle. And he said a lot of the B grade students. You want to make a guess what they end up doing? <laughs> they end up working for the government. So if you're working for the government, check yourself, go back to your report cards and check whether you've been getting all your fees. Alright? So that was what I did. I actually was a teacher. Can you find me in the picture? No? I look like one of my students. Now, I love my teaching profession very much. In fact, it's a vocation, all right? I dedicate my life teaching. And I love this group of students. They are very close to my heart because they're very first batch of students that I taught. And I followed them all the way up until they graduated when they were secondary five. And this group of students that I taught, why I love them so much is because I love the interaction that I had with them, all right? And in fact, in the first year that I started teaching, I was honored with this award called the Most Caring Teacher Award. And this award is not given to any teacher, it's given to teachers and it's nominated by the students themselves. So it was a very proud moment for me. But there were a lot of pains in teaching as well. For me personally, there were two main pains. The first pain of teaching was the fact that each and every one of the teachers are ranked. From the first to the last. Now some of you might have teaching friends, you can verify that with them. Ask them, are you ranked? And how our teachers rank in schools in Singapore is that your rank from the first to the last in the school based on your students' performances. Now, imagine this. Every single year that I was teaching, I was given the 
those students that were academically inclined, not inclined actually. So the ones that were not able to study, were not interested in studying, you know, they, they came to class, they sat through class, you know, there were a lot of things that I had to deal with. And here I was competing with teachers that were teaching the A students. And a lot of A students are self-motivated, right? Even if you taught them well or you did not teach them well, they would want to get their A's. So every year, I felt a lot of pressure to ensure that my students did well, even though I was given year in, year out, given the normal academic students. Now the second pain for me was, I started to notice a lot of teachers that have 20, 30 years of teaching experience. Very, very good teachers. But a lot of them, especially for women, I think you can relate to this. When you decide to start a family, what usually happens to them? Do they continue teaching the same number of hours? I see some of you all shaking their heads. A lot of them, they decide that family is important, they start to cut back on the hours. So when they cut back on the hours, how many of you all here, you know, when you work less hours, your boss still pays you the same? And Ponya? In Jeunesse? In Jeunesse, yes. So a lot of them, when they start to have a family, they sacrifice that time, automatically their pay got a cut. And back then, I was early married in Winston. I did not have any children yet. And I looked at that and I told myself, well, that is a very unfair system because it didn't matter how many years of experience you have had, how many things you have done for the school or for the students, they still saw you as part of the hours that you clocked in. And I knew that this would eventually happen to me. And back at that point in time, Winston was a real estate agent. Now, uh, let me tell you my story. Um, okay, I started real estate in 2009. Uh, for me, I'm a school kick out. Anyone got kick out of school here before? I'm a school drop out. Anyone got drop out before? I'm a school repeat. I got all three. The, these are the three certificates I had. <laughs> so, this is me. So, I grew up in a, uh, a family where I'm kind of an like underachiever, but I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed that I got into real estate. And I was very blessed that even in real estate in Singapore, when my, my first month, when I did full time, I already earned six figures in my first month. And it was good money, I mean, but you have to work really, really, really hard. You know, it was, uh, I was working in, sometimes I come back at 3 a.m. And sometimes we have this understanding, you know, guys come back at 3 a.m. You know, but I was 3 a.m. out there collecting checks. <laughs> but, you know, so sometimes we have this, this disagreement at a time we're about to have our kids. And even when your kids came out at the time, uh, we have to work on weekday nights because that's where the duty is and we have to work on weekends. So you know, when most people are enjoying their life, we are working. So I didn't want to have that kind of lifestyle, you know, and I want to have a change. I didn't want to be the uh, father who's not at home, who's always not around when they are free, you know. So we started to have a change, and we started, why not? If there is a way I can work weekend, I can work weekday night, I have to target. So I thought, since I have some good results in, uh, when I was a real estate agent, why don't I do a training on that? So I started training real estate agents because they are only free on a weekday, daytime. So if they're weeknights after that, you know, that's, that was good. So we had multiple six-figure months, you know, we were doing very well. So but during that period, I also have some headaches, you know. Um, anyway, by the way, uh, just now, just loves to teach the C student, right? She really feel a lot for that. That's why she married me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just a side joke. But anyway, so... I was, uh, I was looking for an opportunity, you know, that could, that could turn my life around. But before I found that, before I found Genes, you know, I was, uh, I, was, I was stressed. You know why? Because although I taught the course although only on weekdays, but every day, because the people pay me for the classes to attend. And for me, they pay me for the results that I'm going to get for them. And I felt a lot of stress, uh, heavy burn about me, because I really feel that these people who pay me money, precious people, I need to help them. But a lot of them are technically behind. So sometimes at night, I also have to work long hours into the night and I will have to, you know, do some support. And sometimes weekends, I also have to do it. You know, so that's my sort of story. So, and I do remember that. I do remember yeah. there were nights when Winston would be up, he would be on the laptop, and I would see him working through the night. And I would ask him, you know, because he came from real estate wanting to have a better life. You know, a lot of us start businesses because we want to have the time freedom, right? The financial freedom. So that was what we had in mind. That was our dream when we started the business. But then I started to see him being bogged down. There were times where he would teach hours on end, lose his voice. And I, I was worried for him. 
And I still remember in the year of 2013, some of you might have experienced this before, um, if you are in the real estate uh, field. What happened was the government came in with the government holding measures. Now, for those of you who are not Singaporeans, let me explain a little bit what this means. When the government came in with the cooling measures, it meant that a lot of real estate agents' uh, income was affected because they were trying to prevent property prices from rising too high. So because we were dealing with a business that related directly to real estate agents, our business was directly affected. Now we tried to expand to Malaysia thinking that it would be better over there, but when you expand any traditional business overseas, what you need is a business partner that you can trust in that country and a local over there and we couldn't get somebody that we could trust. So eventually, in the year of 2013, in the beginning of that year, it was still a very good year for us. We made a six-figure sales revenue. And in the month of June, that same year, we also made a six-figure sales revenue. Now, the thing about business is this, anything can happen. Two months short of June, in the month of August, we experienced a 180 degree change in our business. It got to a point where our sales that was coming in was close to zero sales. Now Winston does the sales and the training, I do the accounts and the admin and the operations. And I got scared because imagine I'm doing the accounts, I can see all that is coming in and all that's not. And all business owners know this, you might not have income coming in, but your expenses are still going up. So we had expenses to pay, at the point in time we had five uh, employees, we had to pay them salary, um, we also had to, at the same time, pay for the rental of the office and also for advertising costs. So that was something that we were very fearful about. Right at a point in time, I want to thank our sponsor, Irene E. She actually shared... Irene, are you here today? Irene? Please raise your hand if you're here. Thank you, Irene. <laughs> she shared with us Jeunesse. Actually, I didn't believe in it. Sorry. <laughs> when she shared with me, I joined out of obligation. <laughs> and uh, thank God I did. If not because of that, I wouldn't have been able to do the business because at one point in time, I was uh, very skeptical about this direct selling industry, obviously because I have no background in that and no success in that and not, never heard of anyone successful in that. But thank God I took the plunge. And what made the change was because she, Daphne, and our Maimon Wanchi keep pushing me to go for this event called uh, Expo. That was in 2012 September, the month that I joined. So I went there, I took a look, and I came back totally different. I think she thought I was crazy. Definitely. I came, yeah, I came back, I was thinking, wow, you know what I saw Janess? I didn't see Janess as an opportunity. Neither did I see it was a direct selling company. You know what I saw? I saw that Janess is a movement. And that's when I felt I was going to be part of a historical moment. And what you have today proves it. This, this is a historical thing that happened. And the movement is going to be global. That I can assure you. And when I got to know this, I came back, I was so excited, I couldn't sleep. So I went to Jian and said, Jian, I'm going to do this. I, so maybe she, but she wasn't, she didn't have the same thinking. So You know, I was the opposite end of, at the beginning of the Jeunesse business, I was not supportive at all. And I, I do believe that there, you might be facing that as a spouse, a uh, non-supportive spouse. But there was one thing, that, I, I, that changed for me. Bring your spouse to an event. I went for the Alaska cruise and I met Kanwa. And he shared his story with me, the same that he shared with you this morning. He shared about how he has 30 over years of experience in network marketing companies. And he was at the brink of retirement, but he chose to come out of retirement, not to go into a different industry, but to join a relatively young company called Jeunesse. And that fired me up. I came back on the way back from the Alaska cruise on the aeroplane back to Singapore. I told him, Winston, I want to do this business together with you. And through that, we want to leave you with two points this afternoon. As a couple, what we have learned through these two years coming to three years. Yeah. How many of you would like to exploit your team? Hands your hands. Okay, how many of you have problems working with your team? Alright, when we work together, although we both want, we both were moving to the same goal, but we have problems. Because I was doing presentation and she was doing presentation because I was leading up to Ruby director six months, I was doing the admin as well. And then she's, she came in and tried to do the same thing as me and we ended up quarreling. <laughs> and we're like, you know, I was pinpointing her presentation, she was pinpointing my admin 
and then it took us time before we, we really found a common goal. So the first thing I want you to write down, with your team, you need to find a common goal. If you're taking notes down, write yeah, this down. It's very important because when me and her were going through the equivalent, we finally asked ourselves, why are we calling for what? Do we really want the same thing? And then we found out we really want the same thing. Find a common yeah. goal. Yeah, so find out what is the goal of your people, whether they and you want the same thing, your team. Because once you're on the same team, you'll be less problems. Because the thing is, for me, I told myself why I'm not doing it. Because growing up, I'm a dyslexic. I don't know whether it might be ADHD or dyslexic, or maybe both. Because until today, she, I still wear my kids' shoe wrongly. <laughs> the left to the right, right to the left. <laughs> so, I, I was an underachiever. I got bullied in primary school. I got bullied in secondary school. And I knew that if I succeed one day, I want to help people do that. And I know in traditional business, I can't do that. But through this platform, I feel that I will be able to do that. So, so that's, that's what, what we want to do in this business. To find a common goal. Our common goal, even though our methods were different, we ended up realizing that the one thing that we wanted was for the people that trusted us to join us in the business, we wanted them to find the same success that we found on the Genes platform. The second thing that we realized that was important for us as a couple is to leverage on each other's strength. It is important to find out what is the person's strength. Now, if you're not aware of what the person's strength is, you might want to pick this book up, all right? Strengths Finder 2.0 by a New York bestseller, Tom Grant. Now, for me, strength is not just what you think you can do well. Strength is what you're passionate about. If you're not sure what's your strength, find out what you're passionate, what you're drawn towards. For Winston, he is drawn and passionate about inspiring people, motivating people, building people up. For me, that is not necessarily my passion. So I gave him that space to do that, focus on that. For me, I was passionate about creating events, organizing things, doing the admin. Now, some of you are thinking, wow, I hate that. But that for me was my passion. That was something that I loved doing. So I hope you learned something this afternoon. Do you all learn something this whole afternoon? Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, uh, once we decided where our strength was, she was doing the admin side, and then I would do the, the training and the motivational side. When we work together, things progress faster. And I was the visionary that said, you know how to hit diamond in one year or ammo in one year. I was the one that said, hey, let's go for it, but I don't know how to do it. I'm the, I will analyze, I couldn't analyze, but I feel I want to do it. But when I tell her, I want to get it, she will get it done somehow. So give yourself a round of applause for investing yourself, investing in the nest. And we wish you